Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back once again. I know it's been quite a long time, but today we're going to be checking out this build here, along with a couple other things in the surrounding area. Now this place is called Shadow Vale Estate, and by the way, if you're wondering how it got its name, it's because of the forest surrounding it. I just kind of felt like it conceals it quite a bit, so I felt like the name was very fitting, to say the least. But the forest is... It's come a long way, but it's not really done yet. I still want to add a couple hidden ruins here and there, and also a few more mysterious things, maybe some monster dens or something. And I also plan to expand the forest all the way over to the other side there. So hopefully we'll be able to get that done pretty soon and maybe add, who knows, another town out here or just a cool inn sort of in the middle of nowhere. But I know I often like to tell you guys the backstory or the lore of the build before we get started, so I guess we'll go ahead and do that right now. So basically, my idea with this was that you could imagine there might have been a old man or something that owned a manor out in the woods, and eventually, since he was old of course, he kind of withered away and died. And then, as many of you know, we do have a little mining area down there that's kind of a mining company's prized possession. So I figured that maybe the owner of that decided this was a nice piece of property after the guy died and decided to purchase it for a reasonable sum and maybe turned it into somewhat of a bee farm. And although this was a manor before, I figured the uh, owner of the mining corporation would try to turn it into something else to, I guess, give him a bit more profit. And I remember a long time ago one of you guys commented saying I should do a bee farm and I thought it was one of the coolest ideas. And then for some reason I just totally forgot about it and we never got to it. But as you guys can see now, it is very near to being complete. You know, I also figured that maybe a bee farm really wouldn't generate that much profit. So there's also a little meadery inside as well. So the whole manor has really been converted into a sort of business instead. Now for those of you who just came here to see the estate itself and not a whole bunch of other stuff, I do apologize, although it has been quite a while, so I really wanted this to be more of an update video on the whole area instead of just a focus on that one little tiny place. But yeah, hopefully you guys are okay with that. I know you'll get to see quite a bit more, and just to make up for the lack of Minecraft builds recently, I am going to be putting this map up for download, at least an updated version of it, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and check the description. It'll be down there for sure, and if not, just go ahead and remind me. But anyways, for those of you who watched the Blackwater Quarry video, which was just kind of covering this mining area here, you may notice that this place looks quite a bit different from the last time you saw it. Not really structure-wise, but just in terms of all the trees. As you can see, although the forest isn't completely done, it's really starting to serve its purpose in the sense that it's become a barrier for your vision, so you can't really see all the way up to the hill to the other castle. Which I think really makes anyone walking around in the area really want to explore a bit more and kind of take their time to go around and follow the path. Speaking of paths though, if you're wondering what the white wool is, that's pretty much where I plan to place the paths. But I do still need to kind of clean up the paths a bit so they're not so bumpy and whatnot and also, you know, add some other details like rocks and whatnot around them. And although they're not all complete, we do have some sections that are finished and I gotta say, for what they are, they have turned out quite well, and I'll go ahead and show you guys kind of what I mean by that in just a second. So for now guys, go ahead and ignore the white wool and just imagine that maybe this is the path exiting the main city. And as you can tell, while you're walking on this thing, you really can't see too much of what's behind all the trees. I mean, you can kind of make out that there's some kind of a building there and maybe see a flag right there, but I think that does a good job at maybe prompting you to go explore those things, but it really doesn't give you the whole picture of what's back there. It's kind of a mystery the whole way. So you're going here, you're kind of blocked by the trees, and then as soon as you turn the corner, you're like, oh wow, there's a castle there, and that kind of prompts you to go explore it. Although, maybe you're sitting here and you notice, all right, this place is probably run by bandits, maybe, oh, there's some walls over there. Who knows, there could be a town. I guess I'll go stock up at that place first, get some weapons, maybe some food. So that kind of leads you to follow the paths all the way over to the next spot of interest. You'll notice though that as we walked along that path, it really took us quite a bit longer than it would have had we just decided to walk straight to the estate from the castle. 
And overall, I think if you want to convey that feeling that someone's traveled a ways to get to the next location, having a forest that causes a path to wind around it and take a longer route is really an awesome way to do that. And once again, I apologize if this was a little off topic from the main focus, but hopefully these tips kind of help you out when you're trying to convey the same feelings, or even if you're trying to just make your world feel a bit bigger. Alright guys, now one last thing, then I promise we'll go check out the rest of the build, but I did want to cover sight lines a bit, and I know I touched on these briefly as we kind of wrapped that corner and then saw the castle, but the reason I think they're so awesome is because, say this is maybe a path that you're traveling, and you can't really see much over there besides the trees, and then you've got a sight line from here all the way to, I guess, the tower on the manor house, and you're like, all right, cool, maybe I should go explore that. Or if you've already known that that was there, you'll at least know you're heading in the right direction if you're trying to get to the next town or navigate through this forest. And then really quick, a couple more examples would first of all be this little area here. You can see the wall has started to crumble, and although I could have just added some more trees in there to make this place a little more secluded, I felt like leaving this area open that kind of looks down to the lighthouse was definitely a lot more interesting. And you can see it would also have the same effect, say if you're down here on a boat in the water and you're looking back up in that direction. But honestly guys, if you want me to show you this in a bit more detail and kind of demonstrate how I would go about doing it, feel free to let me know and maybe I'll make a full video that really demonstrates how you can make this and maybe where you should make it. And if you're just sick of hearing about this stuff and it really means nothing to you, feel free to let me know that as well. But overall, I felt like this might be a helpful topic to cover for some of you. But I think that's enough of that, so without further ado, we will go check out the rest of the build. So first of all, I gotta say, one of my favorite things about this area is that once you walk through this main gate here, it really has a whole different atmosphere than the rest of the forest does. In fact, I think it may be one of the only areas in the woods that the light is actually able to shine down through, so it really has a much happier mood. You can tell once you're out there on the trail, it's really got a very dark, mysterious, and almost frightening atmosphere, but once you're in here, it's really got a nice, lively mood. You can see there's flowers blooming, bees are buzzing and whatnot. And overall, I really just tried to give this place a sense of purpose. You can see there's obviously the bees out here, and there's also the meadery inside, which we'll go ahead and get to in just a second. But aside from that, there's also a bit more story behind it. You can see the bees on this side are, I think, a different breed than the ones on the left side, that may be the best way to put it. But not only are they a different color, but these ones are also maybe a bit more mischievous. I'm not sure if that's the best word to use, but as you can tell, these ones are definitely a lot crazier. In fact, they've also gone out of their way to make themselves a whole new nest up on the roof that's maybe proven troublesome to get down, and that's why it's still up there. But this building here is sort of the workers' quarters, or maybe servants' room. And it's really not much besides just an area for some people to sleep and relax, or maybe take a break from their job of tending to the bees. And there's also a little desk up here, and then a loft up in the upstairs, maybe for some extra storage or something. But if I can get out of here... We'll go ahead and check out the rest of the build. Also, under this little shed thing or cover, whatever you want to call it, there's also some more tools and supplies for maybe making repairs to the bee cages. Not sure what you'd call those, but yeah. And then there's also this, which is the main focus of the compound. Like I said, it was once a manor house that's kind of been converted into a business. And I gotta say, I really did enjoy building this, so most likely you guys will see some kind of a tutorial on it, hopefully in the near future. Thing is, there's a lot of unnecessary bits here and there that I think I could really simplify down. So as soon as I figure that out and really find out how to make this a lot easier for you guys to follow and build on your own, there will most definitely be some kind of a tutorial on it. And now moving on to the inside, which I gotta say is actually quite a big area. So I think the best way to go about this is just to cover it in small sections. But yeah, first of all, we have this area to the left, which is sort of a document storage area. And it's also a place where, I guess, customers could come in and make deals to purchase the mead or honey from the bees. And you can see the curtains conceal a bit more 
than the books and notes. There's also a little trap door over here, which is a nice escape route in case the place gets attacked, since there are quite a few bandit groups throughout the woods here. But this, if you're wondering, actually leads all the way down to the mine, which we saw in the last video. So I gotta say, if you guys ever feel like building something friendly in the middle of a very hospitable area, having some kind of a trap door or escape route may be a nice addition to that build. Now also on the first floor is the place where the meat is made. Now instead of making this a factory style area where this stuff can just be pumped out rapidly, I thought it would be quite a bit cooler if instead of doing it that way it was a bit more handcrafted and of higher quality. And although I still want to make a place in the main city that's maybe a bit more efficient at making this stuff, I thought it would be cool to have a place that is a bit smaller and makes it more high quality and maybe adds their own special ingredient to it. And since this place is also a bee farm, I thought it would be an awesome idea for them to extract the honey from the bees and add it to their mead ingredients. So you have a really rich flavor in the end that as you can see here has been named Honeydew Mead. Now moving on upstairs, you'll see there's some more common things like sitting rooms such as this. And although this may be very simple, I gotta say it's always a nice thing to have to kind of fill up blank spaces or hallways. So keep that in mind when you're building and maybe don't know what to put in a certain place. And up here in this living room type place, we have a nice seating area where some people could sit down and play cards. And off to the right, there's also a bedroom, which you can imagine the owner of this place stays in from time to time. And in here, he's got some cool knickknacks and even a closet for some extra storage. And then moving back out, you'll see we have just some more nice decorations, a chest to store some extra stuff, and also a nice planter's box with a very vibrantly colored bush, which in the end really just helps to kind of brighten up the mood. And like I mentioned, the forest surrounding this place is a very hospitable place, and there's going to be quite a few bandit camps and areas where monsters live. So having an area for guards to stay is quite a necessity, especially when it comes to defending an area like this. So that's kind of what this whole room is, really just an area for guards to sleep and spend their time when they're not on duty. And all the way back here we have the place for the captain of the guard to stay. And then last but not least, moving all the way up into the tower, we have a very cool area which depending on what you prefer could either be a mage's tower in case the guards are still not enough in terms of defending this place, or it could just be a sort of study for the owner to spend some time in just to have a bit more privacy. And other than that, I think it's just got an awesome view. You can see a lot of the windows would end up overlooking most of the trees. And I guess in the end that could be seen as a nice defensive standpoint as well. Who knows, maybe you could scout out advancing armies from here Although then again, it might be sort of tough to see them through all the trees, since the forest is rather dense. But anyways guys, that'll do it for today. Once again, for those of you who just came here to see the building alone, I do apologize for kind of going off on some other topics. But hopefully you enjoyed the video nonetheless. And if you guys have any ideas for some stuff we could make in the future, or any thoughts on what else we could put in this forest here to make it a bit more dark and mysterious, I would love to hear those, so be sure and put them down in the comments. And like I said earlier guys, the map is up for download, so if you're interested in checking out the build on your own, feel free to download that. But yeah, thanks again for watching guys, hopefully you did enjoy the video, and as always, I will see you in the next one.